to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Fantasy Footballers Podcast, Monday edition, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, back with you. What a weekend. That was awesome. Bears fans looking like the D-Wade statue this morning, Oh, aghast at the Ooh. Hail Mary. That was, um, was it's fun to be on the, the winning side of that, but it's devastating if you're on the other end. I mean, uh, I remember the Cardinals in the uh, – was it the playoff game or the Packer game where Aaron Rodgers and Jeff Janis and – Yeah. I mean, you just feel like you've been cheated. Yeah, because you won the game, but then you didn't. However, in that specific game, it really felt like the commanders – They were going to – Beat the yeah, tar out of yeah. the Bears, and it was, like, unfair that the Bears were going to sneak out a win. So I kind of was okay with it, especially considering – that the commanders were at home. If if there is a if there is a Hail Mary changed a loss into a victory, I always want that to be at the For home. The people? Yeah, because otherwise it's like, you know, yeah. just uh, eighty thousand people just destroyed. Just go home sad, everybody. All you family members and kids that came out here to watch this lovely game you love, eat it. Go home. No, I want them to do what they did and go home and have a lifelong memory of I was at that. Yeah, yeah, it was, uh, and you had the the sh screenshots afterwards and the video afterwards of, of Stevenson, of Stevenson, <laughs> oh, the Bears man. cornerback, mid play taunting the Commanders fans. Now, to his credit, he came out early this morning, apologized. You know, didn't double down on nothing there. But then he's the one that ran over and tipped the ball up in the air yeah. in the most comeuppance moment of. If you haven't seen it, what happened on that play is there, there's there's like, you know, uh, personal recordings from the stands of people watching. He is walking back to towards the end zone. Facing away from the play. Facing away from the play, pointing at the crowd. And all of a sudden, you see the wide receivers from the commanders running towards the end zone. So he's like, oh, I should be part of this play. Then he runs over and tips the ball. Up in the air, which right is a no-no. To the commanders. That's the no-no on the Hail Mary. Yeah. You've got to bat it down. You don't tip it up. That's how it ha That's how you lose. But that was just one play of many this week, and this was by far uh, the most positive reaction to the weekend. Like the studs on today's Studs and Duds episode are uh, – there's so many of them. Yeah, because we had actual offense. There was tons of offense – the Monday Punday submissions, which are normally entirely marked by people's fury and disappointment and sadness, <laughs> to a, like an 80 20, flipped the other direction completely this morning. A lot of people happy. I really think we should, we should uh, petition the NFL to make uh, National Tight End Week like every week. Just be, what, we, what about other positions? Well, sure, that's a good point. Yeah, National uh, Quarterback Day, Wide Receiver Day, running National back day. Running Back Reception Day. Oh, uh -huh. okay. let's take it to oh, the you next level. Nuance this thing. Well, I want to fantasy this thing. I don't National care about no, handoffs. No kicker day. Yeah, the all fourth downs. I like it. The National Go for it on fourth. Yeah, <laughs> yes, sir. But um, yesterday, seventeen touchdowns to tight ends. How is for, that? for the for the record? We had been averaging seven, seven, seven point four touchdowns to the tight end position every week. So it's all fixed. I guess so. Every tight end is good. Yeah, no, it's great. Cool, cool. I'll, I'll definitely consider the position settled yes, on my we, roster. We fixed it. All right, like I said, you guys submitted your reactions to the weekend via pun, and we uh, we were happy to see how many positive ones they were. There were. Uh, let's jump in. I'll, I'll start it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. With Ridley, believe it or not. Oh, I don't like this one. Cedric Thrillman. Oh, I love it. Destroyed me everywhere. Oh, Darnell. Money. And Jason, uh, I'll give you one of these, but Rad McConkey. Glad McConkey, baby. Oh, Cade Awesome. Cade Awesome is, that's pretty good. I also saw uh, Ottenheimer. 
<laughs> oh. Uh, not bad. Oh. To infinity. And Devon. Hmm. How about Jameis Winston? Yes. Or, whoa, Nicks. And yay, Flowers. But they weren't all good. No, no. You had Brees Small. <laughs> Jack Poopscott? I like that. <laughs> and uh, Troy Stanklin. Oh, Jason. And this week, uh, it was the No Bone Zone. What, another one? For, hey, Poop Douglas. <laughs> Am I uh, just all the poop? Uh, t- Tyler locked up. Yeah, yeah you got uh, Jordan Battison. Fake London. And uh, my personal favorite of the day, Rico Dayquil. <laughs> Rico Dayquil. Oh, man. Oh, that is. The stadium was fresh out of Dayquil. I, that you know. Is a, that is a mystery what's going on over there. Yeah, Dallas. Dallas tried to come back. They gave <laughs> me a shot in our, uh, our league of record. You mean CeeDee Lamb did? Yeah, I mean, I needed. I went into the night needing 35 points or 34 and a half points from CD Lamb. So I was passively watching the game. And all of a sudden, every time I looked over, CD was in the end zone. I lost by 0.9. Yeah. With the second most points scored yeah. in the league. So for those of you out there, because it was a big week fantasy points wise. So there were a lot of high scores, which mean there were, there were people that were in that boat, the same boat as I was, that I was in, where you scored a ton of points and you still took an L. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to. Focus on the fact my team scored a lot of points and there's a lot of football left. So there you go. Instagram at the, uh, at fantasy footballers, Twitter at the FF ballers. If you want to submit your Monday Pundays for next week, let's get into ready to roll. Welcome to ready to roll presented by Nissan. Eight weeks into the season, two months into the season, we have some data. We have some information. We know how things are going based on this draft strategy you might have selected. And one of the more popular, um, I guess, what would you call it? Like a detour strategy wise? It's it's a, I mean, it's a, it's a contrarian strategy from, from the, the general thinking and consensus, at least for how fantasy players have played historically, and I would say still for the most part they do. So we're talking about zero RB strategy, a theory that became in vogue years ago. Sean Siegel talking about avoiding fragility at the running back position, trying to find wide receivers, difference-making tight ends in the first six rounds, and then looking to the running back position later on in the draft. Yeah, and, and, and there, the are, there are um, – th- this is a method of drafting that absolutely can win, has won many huge tournaments. You know, a lot of times when you look at the big, massive tournament plays, 0RB uh, sometimes wins because the, the positive outcome on the best-case scenario is massive. But some years, it works really, really well. Some years, it doesn't. And this year was very interesting leading in because there were so many wide receivers drafted in the first round, and usually it's the inverse. Usually it's all running backs and a couple wide receivers or a quarterback here or a tight end there. Well, it's often the the pendulum swings based off of what happened last year, and last year the running backs, the early round running backs, were extremely disappointing. It's not – that our commentary on 0RB today, reflecting on the data through two months, is not meant to be – any sort of decisive, you know, commentary on whether it's a good or bad strategy each and every year, but rather point out a little bit of the vulnerability of the, of the strategy, because, you know, we, we had several mock drafts that were run. um, And I'll point to one that Papa Josh did where he navigated the zero RB. And, you know, you looked at a draft that we did in the off season where, Harrison and Puka Nakua to start the draft, Kyler Murray, Sam Laporta, and then Amari Cooper, Terry McLaurin. So you go six rounds, no running back, and then you turn your attention to, you know, starters that have opportunities. And and at the time when he made this draft, this was a really well-executed zero RB example of trying to get the late-round running backs that might be better than you think. But if you ended up with, like, he went four running backs at that point, rounds seven through 11. 
Z- Zamir White. <laughs> um, Zach Moss. Nope. Jerome it's, Ford. It started okay for Zach Moss. Jerome Ford, obviously, um, kind of dealt with injury, some oddities with the playing time, and then Rico Dowdle. And so I guess the point being, the way it's worked out this year, like if you look at running backs taken round seven or later and the fantasy points per game, there are a few. The Chuba Hubbards, Brian Robinson, Tony Pollard's been okay. Uh, J.K. Dobbins you found late and found some opportunities. And Jordan Mason, if if you happen to be drafting late enough to know, you know, Elijah Mitchell was uh, injured and Jordan right. Mason was going to be the guy. The The reality is, is that it was a little bit more threading the needle this year to get it right. And, you know, it's it's tough because it's the hardest position to find on the waiver wire throughout the season to find, you know, long-term viability. Now, it looks like maybe Chuba will be that, right? Chuba, Jonathan Brooks may not come back this year. Maybe Chuba Hubbard will be one of those few. But think about all the other names that people invested into that thought they might find that opportunity. You can look to rookies, right? You can look to Blake Corum and Trey Benson, who haven't been able to produce. You can look at Ty Chandler, who you thought was maybe going to get a 50-50 shot with Aaron Jones. Hasn't happened. Marshawn Lloyd, another rookie. Jilla McLaughlin, a committee back that didn't work out. Jalen Warren hasn't been able to get it going. Eckler not really getting it going. Tajay Spears. Like, a lot of the zero RB running backs this year, round seven or later, it hasn't worked out. And on the other side of the coin, the teams that are winning right now, they've got those foundational backs that yeah. were invested into. The Saquon Barkley's, Jameer Gibbs, Henry, Kyron, Jacobs. The top tier running backs, for the most part, have stayed healthy. There have been misses. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the injuries at the top. AJ Brown missed a month. Puka was bad. Harrison has been a disappointment. Um, there, it, it's just kind of flipped this year. But I would say, if we want to be prescriptive a little bit and talk about when it works versus when it doesn't, I want to remember how the the whole point, the entire point of what allows zero RB to really smash. Like, if five people in your league are doing zero RB, it's not going to work. The thing is, is while everyone is loading up on these running backs and allowing superstar wide receivers to drop and you can take stud, stud, and you just mash the button on incredible depth at that position and then and then fill it in later, that, that's helpful. But this year, it wasn't that way. People weren't letting stud wide receivers drop to the one-two turn. You know, the guys that on previous seasons we were getting at the one-two turn were like, the wide receiver four or five, or the wide receiver four and five there. And then this year is like, you're getting the wide receiver nine, ten by ADP. Uh, so I, I would say, look, like you said, Mike, usually next year's ADP is going to be based on what happens this year. The running backs are going to, they will rock it up. And so if next year it flips, ironically, people will not want to do zero RB because of the failure of this season. And that's when you probably want to, Take your shot. And, and we did have, I mean, some of the anti-fragility stuff, it didn't work out in the wide receiver's favor this year. A.J. No. Brown, Puka Nakua, Cooper Cup, those were top-tier wide receivers. Tyreek Hill lost his quarterback. Marvin Harrison started slow. Um, maybe it, is still starting slow. Like, a lot of those big names the, the, the didn't top, offer you the, the the consistency you hoped for. Yeah, the, at the the top of the wide receiver draft is, is wild. I will be – I'm going to be excited at the end of the season to – like, look at the actual bust rate, the consistency rate of these early wide receivers who are historically an early wide receiver is a is a it's a great bet. Um, you know, a slightly higher hit rate than the early round running backs, but it feels like it is completely upside down. On top of that, the early round tight ends. It's like if you took Kelsey, Laporta, Andrews, Kincaid, yep. those those are yeah. the early tight ends. Those guys are not providing a positional advantage, or at least Kelsey, it's it's a lot better now, and but just saying, like over the course of the season, you're not happy with those draft picks, and the same for the quarterback, where like Allen has been very hot, cold. Jalen Hurts had a lull at the beginning of the year. Mahomes is a is a catastrophe. It's like if you got Lamar out of that fourth right, bag, right. then you're you're super pumped that you went that direction. Right. So it's just it's this year is really strange that the early running backs are crushing. And the early other positions are not. And, and, and the truth is, is 
if it goes bad for zero RB, it can go really, really bad because you need to be able to buy, like it, it gains strength as the season goes on. So you need to be able to buy some wins early on the back of the, the wide receiver and tight end and those piecemeal players before you can go and acquire. Like you can invest a lot of fab in solidifying your running back position or trying to. Could have gone out and spent for Kareem Hunt or somebody like that. But if you start two and five, that's a that's a tough battle back into uh, into contention. So we just wanted to illustrate kind of what happened this year and, and shine a light onto um, the way zero RB has panned out for a yeah, lot of people. End of this season year. is going to be very yeah, interesting we'll do. to see what it looks like compared to a couple years ago. All right, that was ready to roll. Thanks again to our sponsor Nissan and the all new reimagined Nissan Kicks. Take on your city and rain or shine with the bold new Nissan Kicks intelligent all wheel drive. Head over to Nissan USA. Dot com to learn more. Intelligent all-wheel design cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. The weekend was not without its injuries. Stephon Diggs, non-contact right knee injury. Have you heard any updates? I haven't heard any updates, but usually when you see that, that's, I mean... I the, I could think of one example, you know, where I I remember it, it looked like it'd be season ender. It wasn't, but this is usually yeah. We've seen this play before. Yeah, I mean, it's so common when when you're not contacted and your knee goes out. That's that means you probably tore an ACL. Uh, we we don't have reporting on that yet, but as of this moment, I am assuming Stephon Diggs is done for the season. Christian Kirk out for the year with a fractured collarbone. Brian Thomas Jr. left er early in the game against the Packers with a rib injury, having an MRI. They're looking for fractures. Gabe Davis, their other wide receiver, exited in the second quarter with a shoulder injury that he re-aggravated. He didn't return. Jacksonville's wide receiver court potentially wiped out in one week. Evan Ingram is the new David Njoku. Yeah, they, that Jags-Packer game. And that went down to the wire. For, yes. for fantasy purposes, I mean... Ah! It really it, things really no. screwed up there. Well, things, I mean, things did not go according to plan. Jordan Love, um, unfortunately, ah, yeah, yeah, he got he got hurt, and he got hurt early in the game. Really? You, yeah. We were watching. You know, I I know he was playing poorly before he left the game and didn't come back, but he was injured early in that game. I mean, we saw it, and his passes, his throws, his mobility while he was playing what what little of the game left uh, before he exited. He was not himself, and so the, like, well, he you know, missed like he missed like almost the second half, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, he missed a bunch, but I, yeah. I know people he left were in the third. Malik people Willis were came in, yeah. um, upset that he hadn't done much to that point, and it was like he he got injured, and I mean, we were watching uh, the yeah. whole game was like, oh my gosh, he is he is dealing with something. Well, in, in the big divisional matchup with the Lions, he's probably he's in jeopardy of missing next week. Drake May left with a concussion, did not return. Uh, Kendra Miller left with an oh my a hamstring injury. Gracious, I hadn't seen that no, yet. No, for real? Oh, man. Dennis. Dennis, your favorite guy, got hurt again. I noticed that the Saints thermometer behind you that threatened your 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 head. My luscious locks. Your luscious locks. It, it was supposed to fill up to 10 wins, and then we'd shave your head on the air. It is still at the well, point where we stuck it on the wall. So here's the thing. They got two wins on the season. And they need eight more to shave my head. There are nine total games left for the Saints. Now yeah. I got good news for you, Saints fans. You play the Panthers this week. What if we combine so it? Maybe you get one more. Can we combine it with the Jets and see if both teams combine for ten wins? Yeah, sure. Remember this thing off the wall. Remember last week when I said on the show, what if they lose this game? About the Jets. The, about oh, the Jets. Uh, it Do you was, remember that? Yeah. I was like, what if they lose this game to New England? It's um it happened. It happened in unbelievable fashion where they they held the opponent under two hundred and fifty yards. They did not turn the ball over. I believe that is it's something like seven hundred and fifty and O when those two statistics are true since nineteen seventy. I don't and know they, what happened. They still lost the game. Uh, it's look, a mystery to all. I How Jets fans know what happened. What happened? They're the Jets. They're cursed. It's like it, some yeah. some franchises. 
Ah, uh, yes. You just know. <laughs> you're like, you're pessimistic, and you're like, well, look, feels- as a Cardinals fan, I know we're sitting top of the division, but yeah. we suck. The, the we're number one. And, in the and I'm, I'm fully expecting everything to go bad because I know it will. <laughs> you know, it's like some franchises are just meant to lose. And I'm sorry, Jets fans. I, I wish, I you wish can, that it can was. They, can they, like, move on to another team? Like, because there's got to be, this no. has got to be the most painful season. No, you're if you're a Jets fan, you got to stay a Jets fan. You got to keep hoping and riding the wave. I mean, the Remember only Joe thing I'm Namath, happy though, about, you know, that was cool. Yeah, he predicted it. The only thing I'm happy about, because I am sad Super for Bowl Jets three. fans. Jets fans deserve some happiness. I know I dunk on the Jets a lot, but that's really, I mean, that's really an Aaron. It's not a Jets thing. That's an Aaron Rodgers thing. I like dunking on Aaron Rodgers and right. his whiny, whiny face. Um, and I think. If Jets fans are being honest with themselves, they get it. They're like, yeah, I get it. Whose I, I watch them. What was him. this one you think Rodgers thinks? Everyone else's. Kendra Miller, like I said, he left early. He'll probably be in the doghouse for that. What a loser. Um, he looked great on two he, different runs that he did. that did not count and were both called back. Jordan Mason aggravated his shoulder injury. Uh, they said maybe he could have come into the game. At return. this point, it doesn't matter. Christian McCaffrey yeah. is expected to practice during the team's week nine bye, so they are gone. They're on bye. So if you had Mason, say bye. That was so brutal of him leaving the game two weeks ago with the shoulder injury. Then he plays, and you're like, like after feeling really uncomfortable about uh, uncomfortable about the start, makes it through. You got to feel great going against the Dallas Cowboys rushing defense. Which, uh, you mean, look at uh, Isaac Garendo? Isaac Garendo, the rookie who dominated them. So it, the, I started Mason in multiple places, and that that was brutal. Well, yeah, who wouldn't have? Yeah, that's, that's what, that, that, just brutal. That's the process. I, I think there's going to be a lot of questions now with either picking up Garendo or just dropping Jordan Mason because the expectation is. Christian McCaffrey is going to be back in week 10. That is the expectation. That is not a guarantee. And then they're on by this week. And I would say, in general, unless you absolutely have to have a roster spot and you're going to basically I, – I would try to not move on. We do I'm not, not know. I'm Mason. Yeah, exactly. We do not know that Christian McCaffrey, despite the fact that they – they also said that he would be ready for week one. Well, Just remember re- ready that. Ready in, in the uh, utilization levels. And, and we've, we've had seasons in fantasy where Elijah Mitchell was still – getting work with Christian McCaffrey on the field, Mason should be rostered and stay rostered. Debo yes. Samuel left early due to a rib injury. So don't, um, you know, Juwan Jennings missed this week. He gets the bye week to recover. Ayuk is not coming back. Just keep that in the back of your head because I uh, I would have a hard time believing if somebody spin up on Juwan Jennings this past week, he ends up out. They've got another week they got to worry about. He's going to hit a lot of waiver wires. Just an under the radar. If you're already in contention, you don't need to start somebody. Pay attention to him, and we'll talk about it on the waiver show tomorrow. And Mike Rico Dowdle left. Uh, no, he didn't. He leave. was inactive due to an illness. Wink. He, he didn't have the. Uh, you don't think it was an illness? I I, 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 I only say that because of what's coming out from Cowboys beat reporters on Twitter. They're all like, they're they're all saying it without saying it. Of like Rico Dowdle was here. He was signing autographs. Like. I didn't see anything. He must have. It must have really happened in the locker was room. Was he drinking on the sidelines? I well, no, he like was Dalvin <laughs> Cook. I'm not really sure. We what. don't know what he was drinking. Yeah, look, that could have been hydration. That could have been 99 that bananas. Came Who's to say? Straight from the mini bar, man. <laughs> yeah, but it, it could have been a little juice shot. Yeah, a little juice been. shot in a glass bottle. Yeah, it, show me one of those. We, we're not sure what that. No, was. it was clear. But the point being, clear juice. Plenty of them. P- plenty of <laughs> strong, beat reporters. Strong argument. <laughs> it was white grape juice in a little glass bottle. Plenty of beat reporters just saying it's. It was a weird situation of they didn't see him being. He's probably frustrated. Any sort of ill, and then he, yeah. Look, and Dalvin Cook played great, guys. Is that yeah, yeah. Oh, Zeke, but Zeke played really, really well, too. Zeke actually did look no, pretty good. No, he did on a couple, not. Yes, he did. No, he did. There were a couple carries where he looked all right. When because, it, yes, when it's like second and long, and they're like, there's no way they're going to run this ball. And then they run it, and he gets a six-yard gain. You're like, well, yeah, of course. Um, they look, both the, looked awful. The Cowboys' run game is non-existent. They need a real player in there. That real player probably still isn't Rico Dowdle, but he is the best of the three. Um, but I, they're probably not going to use him. Do you <laughs> 
Going back to Dalvin Cook's drinking. (laughs) (laughs) Do you guys remember the video where Peyton Manning is interviewing Marshawn Lynch? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So Peyton Peyton Manning's interviewing Marshawn Lynch. This is post-career. And then, and, and he's just like, you know, what was your pregame warm up or whatever? And he he tells Peyton Manning, he's like, well, you know, every day before the game, I'd take a shot. And Peyton, I think it seemed like he genuinely thought, like, yeah. like, like, what? I don't. Just, what kind of like, like a needle? He's like tortorol, or he's gonna be throwing out all the the the, the medicines that that the people the get. Pain a, juice they, 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 they get, get. an injection. Yeah. He's like, I think it was like Hennessy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's yeah. like, he's like, well, where do you get that? And he's like, from my backpack. <laughs> Marshawn, man, <laughs> one of a kind. Oh, my gosh. All right, that was uh, today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. We'll take a break. We'll hit the studs. I'm pretty sure Cowboys fans were just, like, past the bottle. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. It's like watching – that Dude, team looks – That game was – that offense was broken for three quarters. I kept messaging – our our company slack of like what is this offense? Well, it's just look, it's just dumping the ball off to Jake Ferguson who's two yards away from him and then he and getting throttled. Like I did agree with was, the commentator last night that pointed out the fact that Dak cannot move the way he used to move, and I think that that has played a role right now in moving in the pocket, getting outside the pocket, taking a you know taking the five or six free yards. To me, he looks – he just looks bigger. Does and, he, look, he look like he's not sleeping well? Uh, not sleeping well? Is this a sleep number? <laughs> I'm just asking <laughs> questions. Man, maybe uh, Tell you what, maybe the sleep I, number's not doing the job, I huh? Was, Gotta uh, go pod four. Uh, I didn't say – I asked questions over here, guys. Listen. He, he is on pace right now through six, through six games. I, I don't want to count this last week because he had negative one rushing yard. Okay, so I'm going to take that out, even though that should Wait, should exist. This week, yes, you're taking out the one. I'm taking he just out played? the one he just played prior to this week because you talked about. I mean, you okay, saw in that game ahead. he didn't yeah, run; yeah, he yeah. was immobile. The previous six games, what do you think Dak Prescott's 17 game pace of total rushing yards is? And to give you context for his career, uh, like last season, he was at 242. Yeah, he's a couple hundred yards. Yeah. guy. I um I would have guessed having no context because I wasn't paying attention. I would have guessed like 200. Yeah, I the same. I probably would have as well. Without the negative one rushing yard yesterday, he was on pace for 70 total yeah, that's, rushing that's yards. That's not even a – In the course wow. of a season, that's Big Ben. So so, yeah. so that just adds more fuel to what, what we were seeing. And they don't – like I, this was my fear about them not being able to repeat what they did as an offense last year is that there seems to be more dysfunction to the offense right now than there was last year. From a play calling, functionality, like frustration, frustration standpoint. I will say this: they did play a very good San Francisco 49ers team on the road. This is, you know, it, it's not always going to be easy. I mean, Dak Prescott this season against Baltimore was the quarterback one on the week. He, he, it's it's not like he's going to disappear going forward. Atlanta. Philly, the Texans, the Commanders. I think there's a, a good stretch run ahead of, of passing they defense. They are. Man, I don't, they are I don't two, know if I like those last three, though. They're two-and-a-half-point dogs right now on the road against Atlanta for this. Yeah. All right, let's talk about some of the good that happened this weekend. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. It's not going to be possible for me to get into every name of every player that did well. No. But I week- want – Go ahead. Yeah, I was just saying this week there's too many people that went nuclear. But I want you to like focus on some of the names that might be prescriptive or interesting. The top five scorers at the quarterback position were Jalen Hurts, Bo Nix, Kirk Cousins, Brock Purdy, and Matthew Stafford. Let's Hurts not- was such a slow start to this game. Ends up with three three rushing touchdowns. Three rushing touchdowns and a bomb touchdown that was awesome to um, Devontae, Devontae Smith. Smith. The, it, he he ended up uh, having just an outstanding game. I I really wanted to discuss Bo Nix because Bo Nix has been really good on the season. He's the quarterback ten right now, and that's despite starting really poor. Like the mm-hmm. first month of the season, he didn't look good. He couldn't connect on anything down the field. Three of the last four weeks, the second month of his career, he's been a top ten quarterback. 
barring Monday Night Football, although he's the quarterback too right now. So he, he's going to stay in the top he's ten. Stay I think in the top ten. Las Vegas, Los no Angeles, New Orleans, and Carolina. So I would point out that you know if you want to find a trend there, home games. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know those were yes. his three top ten games were at home, uh, and and not the hardest defenses. No, and and what's wild is like, and this is anecdotal from watching the games every week. I feel like Denver has the ball the entire game. That's how it's felt. Like the the pass attempts this past week, thirty seven. I just feel like they have the ball the whole game. Their defense is very good. Um, he has to go on the road against Baltimore, Kansas City the next two weeks. Yeah, Kansas City, I, I am definitely afraid of. Yeah, Baltimore, I'm not. Baltimore is actually – Yeah, they're giving it up to the quarterback. They position. really are. They're 30th on the season of, of fantasy points given up to quarterbacks, so I'm not too worried. And I do think we need to the, – the reason I bring up Bo Nix is because people don't view him enough as the dual threat that he is. You know, we don't have any problem – playing Jaden Daniels from before week one coming in because we know he's a crazy dual threat guy that could run for north of 500 yards maybe he runs for 700 800 yards um that's amazing and Bo Nix is not the runner that Jaden Daniels is Jaden Daniels is starting to look like he's in the Lamar Jackson tier of like four people in history but right now Bo Nix is on pace for over 550 rushing yards even with a down week even with a down yeah. rushing week so yeah. This is this is a dual threat quarterback, and that's going to raise your floor quite a bit. Yeah, he does have to throw it to Troy Franklin, though. Papa Josh, he doesn't have to. He didn't really. Do yeah, he, oh, didn't, he didn't throw it to I Troy know. Franklin yesterday, and it didn't bother him at all because he was slinging it to anyone and everyone. Um, but Papa Josh, mad props this week. You traded for Anthony Richardson from my team. I I got rid of that fool for two dollars of fab, but then. Despite doing that, you went to the waiver wire, picked up, and played Bo Nix over Anthony Richardson. Very good move. He wanted to play my stream against me. That is fair. That was your stream of the week. Uh, and Cousins was Jason's, and Cousins had a great game. Um, we finally got another big-time game from Kirk Cousins, 23 for 29. Does he play Tampa anymore? Four I, You know what? I guess that's – I'm going to have Not to apply year. that. He doesn't get to play Dallas's defense. Brock Purdy, Matthew Stafford, Lamar um, – it was a struggle for Lamar. They lost the game, but he put together a good fantasy week. Herbert threw for almost 300 again. Wait, Baltimore didn't lose the game. They played against the Browns. <laughs> the Browns can't <laughs> score 20 points this season. They're 1-5. and five. Well, They had to rely on their backup quarterback, a little-known um, quarterback named Jameis Winston, who mm. I like this um, – Somebody pointed out that Jameis Winston, when he gets to speak to the media, always looks like he is – he's like reading a line from an inspirational movie that he's been practicing really hard in the mirror. Yeah, he is a character, man. I I love that guy. He is – he is – his play for, play for the name on your helmet. Oh, wait, there's no decal <laughs> yeah. on my helmet. Uh. I mean, I, I love him. But it is so interesting that the team that was 1-5 and five, hadn't scored 20 points this season – Puts up 29 against Baltimore as soon as uh, they move to the backup due to injury, and now you've got you've got the Browns, and you're going. They're interesting. They're in I mean, they lose Amari Cooper, and it was fine because they had such an improvement at quarterback. It just shows you how good Amari Cooper would have been <laughs> on yeah. the Browns. Really, he probably he could have been sent to to like a purgatory right now. Like, we'll see. Yeah, I I'm telling you, as someone who has Dalton Kincaid, who praise God he got into the end, <laughs> he got into the end zone. But as somebody yeah, who has watched this team week after week after week, if they could throw it zero times, I swear they would. I swear they would. They do not. It, it like, uh, it hurts them to throw the football or something. And Amari Cooper had a disastrous week. We'll talk about it later. Now. Going into the week, I think a lot of people were off of Baker Mayfield. But if I had told you before the week began Dude. that he would have 50 passing attempts, I believe that that narrative would have changed. It would. Yeah, yeah we mean, did say that we thought he'd be better than people expected. You know, the headline is we you, you lose Godwin and Evans, but Baker has been good independent of them. Yeah, he's been a top top eight quarterback in all but one game. And this game, the first one we've seen without those two star wide receivers – he puts up 330 and three. Now he did throw two picks, but 330 and three with backups is amazing because because Laser has been awesome. I would bench him against Kansas City. Yeah, this on week. the road against the Chiefs is uh, 
Jaden Daniels, yeah. uh, Hale married his way to a uh, productive day. He fought through an injury. And then Kyler Murray on the road, winning back-to-back hey. games for the first time. Good for you, Kyler. And one thing to point out, Arizona's offensive line has not given up a sack for three consecutive games. Now, to finish your sentence, for the first time in, like, 25 games. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Kyler had not won back-to-back -back games in years. Uh, and going east, the Cardinals have struggled. And then they end up winning another game and lead the division and have a better seed than the Packers. <laughs> well, the Packers right now, um, they're not a division winner, but w w the 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 Cardinals are. So how does that make you feel, Owl? Okay, he can't talk. He <laughs> can't talk. Um, very good. Also, very good also audio. Falcon, um, how about your Niners would not be in the, in the playoffs right now? While you look up at the awesome, yeah, look straight up. Long season, look straight up. Yeah. Long season. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, gotta dunk season. now because I can't dunk yeah. later. Yeah, enjoy this. Um, running back studs this week. Top five scores: James Cook, two touchdowns. Josh Jacobs, getting it done. Devon Achan, welcome Woo! back. Yeah, baby, that's my guy. That's exciting. Ramondre, two <laughs> two touchdowns. <laughs> Ramondre's in this list. I moved. It's so stupid. I moved Ramondre into my lineup and placed the Chuba Hubbard. Moments before kickoff, which I agreed with, I answered that one on. Uh, Did you? Yeah, Sunday live. Sunday. I'm like, I'm not playing Chuba. I'm going to play these yeah. gross running backs. And Ramondre had 23 opportunities. He carried the ball 20 times on the ground for 48 <laughs> yards. That's, Zeke's like, what's wrong with that? Yeah, no, maybe Zeke's like, like, what are you talking about? That's that is amazing. Joe Mixon, baby, 21. Joe points. Mixon is just unstoppable so i think hn is the headline there like 10 for 97 eight targets with tua the offense had meaningful you know fantasy players once again we yeah. we're back yeah i mean uh, the running game opens up i the, i talked about this ad nauseum and which most was, are two touchdowns yeah most are two touchdowns the fact that you're not the running back behind the line of scrimmage is not running against 11 people when tua is there with the weapons they have in Tyreek and Jalen Waddle, like it's a completely different defense. And Devon Achan is not meant to go up against stacked boxes. What he's meant to do is catch the ball, running full speed. And if you just look at his three starts with Tua, forget the rushing work, which he's been very good. I mean, he's just give me his fantasy his, points. His reception pace in the three starts with Tua would be 113 receptions for 11. 100 receiving yards and 11 receiving touchdowns that's a wide receiver one and then you add on the uh the rushing work he's he's basically he's averaging uh 23.1 uh ppr points per game with tua and and look that you can make fun of Ramondre, but the opportunities were there on a team that has proven they're going to give them to Ramondre for the third consecutive game antonio gibson was under 1.5 a yeah, carry he was atrocious shut so, up I'm still mad at Andy for having Raheem Mostert, <laughs> Ramondre Stevenson, and Cedric Tillman put up. Those were that was the trash so, part of his lineup, and so they put listen, up six touchdowns on me. Mike, Mike, I'm I'm not sure you're aware, but Jason um, and I I'm aware. played each other in Dynasty. And, I am aware, and um, you know, things went the way they went. Yeah, <laughs> I mean R Ramondre with with that line, it's it's unbelievable. Like you're what 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 was Gibson running at? Uh, five carries for six yards, 1.2 a carry. Yeah, so that's atrocious. And Ramondre's at what, like 2.4, 2.6 and 2.4? Nearly. Oh, that's double. It Maybe. is. Um, they have a problem. So, look, DeAndre Swift, it was a slow start. It was a fast finish. He keeps dominating. Jason started the week, DeAndre Swift. Plays Arizona next week. You can start hey, him he'll up. He'll be all right. And then Jonathan Taylor back oh. from the waiver or back from the injury list. He is so good. Good. He looked amazing. I mean, there were plays that just there there was not the play was not there. And he's just he made the play. He chunked ten or eleven yards here, there, all over the place. He was the best part of this offense. Anthony Richardson looks The fact they were three inept. points away from a win when Richardson went ten for thirty two from from the pocket. I thought for sure they were going to win when that when that fumble recovery ran back for a touchdown and on the field I believe it was a it was it was not blown dead at the fumble spot on review. They brought it back. Oh but yeah, yeah, yeah. The but defense, at that point, yeah. it looked like the Colts were going to win, and Anthony Richardson was going to win another game he did not deserve to win. Anthony Richardson, um, we'll we'll talk about him. I promise. Yeah. 
Uh, Isaac Grindo, 14 for 85 and a touchdown. Mason went out hurt and Mostert two touchdowns. Not efficient on the ground, but, you know, it says something that he's the goal line, goal line back there in Miami. It does. Uh, from a week-to-week -week standpoint. Um, here we go. Wide receivers, top five of the week, C.D. Lamb, Lad McConkey, Cedric Tillman, Josh Downs. This feels like a like a like a magic <laughs> trick. Yeah. To put up twenty plus points on ten completions from your quarterback, Marvin Harrison, baby, number five. Nice to see. Josh Downs. I think it's important for people listening that that you've seen good stat lines from Josh Downs for the majority of the time he's been playing, and now you watch him with Anthony Richardson put up twenty point two, and you're going to say. I need to start him. You do not need to start him. Um, his stat lines, like w his big bomb touchdown, mm -hmm. can you start? Was, I think I would. Man, mm, his, I would, I'm willing now. Do, do you did you see the big bomb touchdown? Um, it was basically a broken play where he was. Yes, Anthony Richardson connected with him, but he had half of the field to himself. Yeah, he did. He could have got a wheelchair out and wheeled himself in the the last twenty yards. So I mean, here's it, the only reason why I said that is because they get to play. The juiciest pass funnel defense yeah, in, the, they get in National Football League this next week. I I agree with you in principle on the year round. I think on a one week basis you could go back to him. Um, it was nine targets, right? You can have a broken play, but nine targets against the number one pass funnel. He is a defense. good player. Yeah, I mean he's their best receiver by a lot, in my opinion. Yeah, he. I mean he can actually get downfield. Well, and he's just he's just separation, constant separation. Um, Lad McConkey, six for one eleven ah, and two. My lad. <laughs> They're throwing the football a lot right now, and McConkey got it done. Had a big touchdown, uh, like a a long one in this game. He's sitting at wide receiver twenty. This is exciting because you you have rookie wide receivers that it normally takes time to get going, and if this team can't run like they want to, which they can't right now, like J.K. Dobbins, um. Like he he's not having the big play anymore, right? And uh, so it, it it means they're throwing the football a little bit. And their defense is giving up more points. Marvin Harrison six for one eleven and a touchdown. Hello, and he just, he caught his passes. That was the big thing. Is like he's it's been, one of the keys. <laughs> it's it's super important. But over the course of the season leading up to this, he was like a fifty percent, maybe even below fifty percent catch rate. He was out of sync with Kyler, and some of the catches that were in sync were just dropped. This game, I guess, I mean, he, he told himself he has to catch these because there were some difficult catches. Uh, it felt like, why is every Marvin yeah, Harrison catch have to be so hard? Look at superstar wide receivers around the league. Yeah, they make those, but it doesn't have to be every catch. That being said, it is nice to see him um, have a big game, catch passes, be more in sync. And so, you know, it's, it's arrow up for a great rookie. If it wasn't for Malik Neighbors doing what he had – done to start the season I don't you know and, and the draft cost of where you spent up for Marvin Harrison he's having a very good rookie season it just doesn't feel like it well, because and, of those other two factors and I think it's going to feel more like it soon Cardinals have a couple home games Marvin and him getting on the same page 15 targets 10 catches 143 <laughs> <laughs> who's that Andy Woo! superstar Calvin Ridley everybody with Mason Rudolph. You just had to get DeAndre Hopkins out of the locker room, that locker room cancer, DeAndre yeah. Hopkins. Um, look. This was a game I will, for a couple seconds. I will dance while I can dance. But 15 targets is going to get it done every single week. I can tell you that. 100 yards in the first quarter. I, it was a very, it was not, it was really in my heart not a dance party. It was an exhale. Yeah. It was not. It was not a, a victory lap. It's one week. It was an exhale because. Hey, it's it's possible. I didn't have <laughs> to bring the name up as the second half sleeper, and I'm thankful that look it, from my mentions, people did pick him up and play him. That was the cool thing to see is that some people benefited from this. They didn't just all have him on the bench. It was a week where a lot of wide receivers performed, but. This is important for the confidence level of Calvin Ridley, the $90 million man on this team that got boat raced by Detroit. Maybe Calvin Ridley will be consistent for you. Maybe. Without, Maybe. Uh, I would say without Hopkins there, 
Um, just like we saw at the very beginning of the season where he, he was a heavier target. I, uh, bright days are ahead for Calvin Ridley. It's all going to still come down to the quarterback play. And I don't know if Mason Rudolph, who started the game looking really, really good, this was a game where it was tied 14 to 14. I mean, it was like, oh my gosh. What did it end? What was the final score? Are the Titans going to win this game? Are they going to make it It better? It was not 14 to 14. Well, it was 14 to 52. You might say at the end, yeah. Yeah. I believe that the Lions had 40 plus points when Jared Goff had 30 passing yards. For real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa. I think he was. Oh, at, you, you, I think he was at forty. Do you not know the Goff line? I think he was at forty-two no. passing yards. Goff completed twelve passes for eighty-five yards with fifty-two and, points and and three passing touchdowns. Oh yeah, those passing touchdowns were annoying <laughs> because they were they used the uh, you know where the Lions and we're going to run the football yeah. against the opposition, and they were at the goal line multiple times. And it was Brock Wright. It was Sam Laporta. Yep. It was Khalif Raymond. And they would just fake it to the Montgomery Gibbs, who could have had even bigger games. I forgot Montgomery threw Montgomery, one of the yeah, touchdowns as That's well. That's true. Yes, yes. Um, Devontae Smith, big bounce back game. You know, Jason's been really loud in reminding you that he's going to be fine. There were people that, after one bad week, yeah, wanted insane. to give up on Devontae Smith, in, which was wild. In half PPR. Last week was was terrible. Last week he had you know one catch. He did nothing. But outside of that single week, he hasn't been single digit fantasy points at all. He's double digit or better in half PPR. That's that's a great barometer. He's literally on our consistency uh, score on this. He's an A. So like, <laughs> don't move off of an A. Uh, tight end studs this week. Kate Otten, twenty four point six points. Looked great. It was a big week for the tight end. It was it was uh Scott Hansen said it over four thousand times during red zone that it was national tight end day. Scott Pianowski pointed out in week one, a four for forty five line would have made you the tight end seven on the week. This week that would have made you the tight end twenty four. That's how many big performances there were. Kyle Pitts, twenty three point one, almost uh, made the one, biggest one mistake. One and a half touchdowns. Almost made the biggest mistake ever going into the oh, end zone. Not almost. He Definitely did. Got the, lucky. The mistake is that the uh, multi-billion dollar corporation that is the NFL, they can't possibly have a camera. Down well, the line. Just, just point it down the sideline. What in the Two heck cameras. are you doing? No. What in the heck? Four. Four cameras. Okay. Spin whoa, up whoa, NFL. Whoa, 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 whoa. Four? Four cameras. One from each direction on yeah. the side. You know where the goal line is. It's not moving. You don't have. You can, you can tripod this thing. Where's okay? the other you, two cameras? I'm saying each goal line. Oh, you can, I see. You can have them I going see. down the line in both directions. Yeah. At the oh, end, at the end of your camera. You think we were suggesting only pick one of the end zones? <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> saying what you I'm thought? saying it's not even only good enough. Only the north side. Because they only put a camera, even when they have the goal line camera, they only have it on one side of the field. I want every time I look at the goal line down the line angle, I want to see a camera I mean, on the other side. They at the should end of the have yes. lasers on the cameras. Yes, and they should have the high speed ones that they use. And what's the what's the TV show where they just test stuff all the time? Mythbusters. Mythbusters style. <laughs> like, give me high speed, high resolution. Get um, Nolan out here to like film Christopher. Yeah, get him to film the goal. I mean, we have lots of money. We have you guys can spend. We've been in headquarters. You got bidets on every oh toilet. Oh my gosh, it's on. It's your NFL headquarters. <laughs> You're doing great work there outstanding property the atms there don't require a pin code <laughs> yeah you're just like hey you need some money yeah yeah go buy some cameras yeah all right listen, four listen. per stadium kyle pitts has been great he has um he was already the tight end four before this week george kittle keeps getting it done kelsey the big game super glad it was against me finally uh that was fun trey mcbride can we get trey mcbride a touchdown. He no. was awesome for in this game. crying out loud. No, we cannot. He was awesome. He was a go-to target. 11 targets, 9 for 124. Absolutely outstanding game. Uh, the, the maybe dude, the best performance of the week, except no touchdowns. The dude is currently, what I'm seeing here, he's missed a game. So, it, like some teams have had a bye week, but he has played seven games, zero touchdowns, and is the tight end four on the season. Just give him a couple. Look, I, he I, would be crushing he's everybody. He's definitely third in the packing order around the red zone right now because Connor, they like to hand the ball up and then Harrison. But he's going to get in there. 
Michael Wilson got hurt this week. It didn't look great to me. Could have been a uh, multi-week ankle sprain. I don't have an update there, but the tight ends got it done. We got to take a break and get into the duds. Uh, breaking news, by the way, McBride still didn't get into the end zone over the break. No, he didn't. But before you move on, you have to read the name that's right after yeah. Trey McBride. I, I knew dock. you weren't letting him no, move on. No, absolutely not. Um, Four for 85 and a touchdown. Oh, he took advantage of the injury to the uh, to the starter. Adam Troutman. Yeah, four, four for baby. 85. Yeah, Woo! yeah they, they did. Uh, <laughs> four years too early. Uh, I believe Kroll. <laughs> Lucas Kroll went out hurt. Lucas Kroll had been uh, getting some snaps. Yeah, but he's not putting up four Chapman for 85 in a score. Against Carolina. Unleash the fish, man. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that take is, a walk. That is All right. very funny. Also, on the course of the season prior to this game, he had a 17-game pace of 77 yards. <laughs> well, he beat that in one game now, didn't okay, he? Okay, he sure did. <laughs> Pooped in his big boy pants. Look, this could not have been more appropriate for Caleb Williams. The big boy pants had been fitted, uh, and he went out there and had a stinker of a game against Washington. 10 for 24, 131 yards. It was a regression type of game. Washington's defense, though. That's the question. We mentioned That's the this. Question. I mean, they have been getting 5% better per week. They might have gone 10% better in this game. You know, he just he was not leading drives, not getting first downs. It was a pr thirty three passing yards in the first half. What was crazy? So the 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 drive to take the lead and win, he looked pretty good. It was like the only time in the entire game he looked. Most of his stats came from that. I think it was like fourth quarter, and we were talking about how he had three completions. Complete, like what? That seems impossible. It was a it was a putrid game for him. Um, and so the nice thing is we've seen the flashes of brilliance. We've seen great games put together. Um, I know it's really, really tough because a lot of people started him in this matchup. You expected that high over under, and instead this game was so important, uh, between Caleb and Jaden, the defense has stepped up and it was a, it was a slug fest. Joe Burrow without T Higgins, uh, solid start to the game. And then it went South quickly. Mm -hmm. He only ended up with two thirty four and one CJ Stroud. One touchdown, two hundred eighty-five yards. What do you do now? Like, well, well now you now you've I lost mean, next, Diggs. Next week is on the road against the Jets. There will be no Nico, which we've heard he's on. Nico's on track for Week Ten. Have people been playing Stroud? Of course, yeah, people. people have been I mean, he, Stroud. I, I, I had him as a start of the week this week against he, Indy, where he, you know, against Indy early in the season, are playing Stroud. he was the quarterback eight. I mean, this is this is um, this is not a player that's been consistent at all, going back to last year. For fantasy, I mean, he's an F in our consistency ranking. He has two games you've been happy with this year, both with Nico. Yeah, I don't think in weeks can... one and four, uh, you've got to you got to push him to the side right now. I agree. I don't think you can start him right now, especially this week. Uh, you look at him as a streaming option, um, but this week without Stephon Diggs, without Nico Collins, you put Sauce Gardner on Tank Dell by himself, and all of a sudden that that's that's a yeah, matchup don't you don't. And want don't to forget that. Don't forget they have the slowest player in the NFL not contributing yeah. on a weekly basis. Dalton Schultz, what's up? So on the web portal. I can say anything I want about him, by the way, because he can't it's... catch me. The uh, <laughs> uh, On the web version of Sleeper, I see numbers of C.J. Stroud is 98% rostered and 79% started. So Yeah, that's 79% too many. I didn't just say, like, it's next week is a – Here's a hot here's a hot tip. Don't start somebody from that division. Just don't start him no, at quarterback. No, 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 Everybody no. in the division should not but be I've, started I've, at quarterback. I've got a better question for you. Rest of season. Bo Nix. So no, no, that's easy. I'm making it hard. CJ Stroud or Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Yeah, I'd take Mahomes. Okay. My that's, uh that's stream of the week, by that's the way. Not hard. Superstar Patrick no, Mahomes. No, that's not hard for me. He's been so bad. I mean, if Nico comes back, Stroud will be better. But look, this team, the they about, won the game. They have Joe Mixon. They are a running football team. Joe Mixon has been a top five running back every he, week he started. Joe Mixon is the running back two in points per game just behind Derrick Henry. Uh, Anthony Richardson, pa 10 for 32 passing. 31% completion rate, huh? Yeah, and um, you need to be 60-plus percent to be a top 10 
fantasy quarterback. He's almost there. He's at thirty one percent. His efficiency and performance at the position. He by the way, he took a playoff because he was tired in this game. That was um, unbelievable. Un <laughs> believable to me that afterwards Anthony Richardson came out and they asked like you know because he 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 missed a play and we thought maybe he hurt himself yeah. on a run he said he he called himself out and told coach he's tired he needs a play you're a quarterback you don't yeah. get you see Lamar Jackson after a big long run being like I need a breather give me a freaking break this is, this is the biggest quarterback bust in the league this is the biggest dynasty freak out that you're ever going to have. This is a quarterback that has been outside of the top 20 at the position five straight weeks. Um, he ranks I two. Mean, look, two. he has two good passes on the year. They were both in week one. That's my opinion on, on no, Anthony no, no, Hitting downs this week was pretty good. A meaningful for fantasy. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the downs play, yes. You're right. You're right. Uh, Anthony Richardson ranks 222nd in okay. completion. Let me rate. write this down. 222. Okay. 222. Out of 225 quarterbacks that have 250-plus dropbacks since the year 2000. You cannot. Do, has your opinion changed on the debate? Because you say you have to develop Anthony Richardson. Now, that can be done on the field, but that would be the argument for every player that's played too soon in history. Yes, my, or, my opinion has changed. You you develop him on the side. Because, yeah, 44% completion percentage cannot be a starting quarterback. You, I mean, That's what he is, by and, the way. And here's what you do. You don't. You don't develop him with, um, you know, you're you're not you're not watching film and and breaking that down as as much as maybe you need. I, what I would do is get him target practice. I <laughs> just put him. I'd build a field over to the side where you can take snaps and hit a target with like. And I genuinely, I'd love to see him succeed. His physical gifts and tools are amazing. I'm not trying to. I'm genuine. Like my agenda here is not to talk ill of this person forever like I hope he can develop but he wasn't ready to be a quarterback Mike during the draft season we talked about him as a prospect yeah and there's I, hate just, I hated it there's just some basic lines you have to cross to be able to stay quarterback in the NFL and a 44 percent completion percentage it doesn't matter how much you run John we've seen this now Justin Fields has lost his job in two places Justin Fields can run the football right um Deshaun Kaiser could run the football. I mean, there, there were players that are mobile, but I mean, he is one spot ahead of Tim Tebow on that list. <laughs> Tim Tebow was two twenty three. Oh, that's not even a joke. You're no, saying that no, that's real, factual, real thing. Out of two hundred twenty five. Hey, but, Tim Tebow won games, won a playoff game. Yeah, and and Richardson can win a game with a one big play and running the football. Jeremy brings up a good point here. Like, where uh, Jaden's VR. Jaden Daniels set uses up VR to for the, the, practice, yeah. Are other people it are they just really loud about it and other people are doing it or they're the only team because, like it's obviously it's not just the VR but you can't rule out that this thing is helping. I'm not sure the VR is going to fix the uh, mechanics. It it'll fix processing, but I don't think it's going to fix your mechanics. And the it's just processing I think is the hardest thing to fix though. Being able to read the defense really fast. What about throwing the ball to that spot over there? Yeah, that's uh, like that's the thing that I think you can actually like. Co good coaches can fix that. Where processing, I is, thought accuracy was not the thing yeah, that you can fix. That's that's I, been the story with. No, like, that's what made Josh Allen so wildly surprising in Lamar Jackson's it's, ascension. It's extremely difficult to fix it. But if I I don't know, I don't know enough about quarterback play to tell you what like read what, what Anthony Richards is doing, and, and this is what's wrong. What if he just after practice goes Dave and Buster's and just works on the little machine where it's got the holes. But those are tiny footballs. You need a uh -huh. you need a machine like that, but it's the big bigger. He can clowns. bring his own. It's a Duke. He can bring his own. It would footballs. break the machine. It would not. Yeah, bet. and he he way, could break the machine with the small ones. <laughs> I did I did ruminate on something. You know how we've had these discussions about the the scripted plays and the jokes about yeah. why don't we script more? Uh huh. I I think I finally figured out, and this is not rocket science here, but I figured out why. They can't do that. They can't practice enough. Right. Because the script is not what I've written down on a piece of paper. It's what I've practiced. Yes. They go out there and they execute the 20 plays or this 15 plays because that's all they have time. They don't let them practice that much. You know what I would do then? 
I'd run those 20 plays again. <laughs> no, I'll just repeat just it. Be like, all right, we're uh, back going back to the, to the beginning. Well, until they catch Take on. The no, they Five, should six, seven, eight. snake draft it. <laughs> just do the plays in reverse order yeah. on the way back. Exactly. Um, just flip them all. You not, know what I mean? Do the same thing, but yeah. now, oh, I know now the, yeah. mirror it. Audible, right trigger, and then you, you hit exactly. the mirror. Exactly. Gino had a horrible game. It was not going to be good without DK. We knew it. This was predictable. We said it. Buffalo's good defense. Uh, also, a lot of bit rain in that game, so yeah. throw that one out. Do we have a boo button? Because I've not seen a stat line this bad. Kenneth? No, 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 no. No bone on. zone, baby. Nine for 12? It was terrible. No. He did the right thing on a play where the center <laughs> snapped the ball way over Geno's head. Way over. It was Like awesome. 30 yards or so. Right. Kenneth Walker has to be the one to go pick it up, and he gains – he gets 10 yards back. Right. Oh, but he lost like 20. But yes. on the play. It was a negative 19-yard run. With nine carries, though? Yeah. Well, they, so they, here's, they here's what else him. Here's Did what we else not happened. read the no bone zone? No, here, here's what happened oh, in did. this game. So, yes, Mike is right. He got a negative 20-yard play where he had a good play. Yeah. He, he, he picked up extra yards, and it just counted against him. So that stinks. What else happened is this game got out of hand pretty quickly, and later in the game, they they – they just went to Charbonnet. They charbed yeah. it up. They yeah. charbed it up, and they said, you're going to be healthy for the next game. Like they, I was playing against yeah. Kenneth they Walker conceded. in two leagues. I was paying very close attention, and they just said, yeah, don't worry about it. Take the rest of the game off. Well, look, it was disappointing because he had some opportunities around the bone zone. Javante Williams did, too. Five targets, four catches for eight yards. He had two carries inside the five for negative one yards against Carolina. What do we do with this information? I don't know. I I thought we were trending to a place that we could be like trustworthy. Yeah, we could be okay going with Javante, but this was it was weird. It was there was so much play action. I know by the end Javante got a seventeen carries. We'll we'll absolutely take what he got seventeen and five targets, but they like kept play actioning. I mean they they were really featuring Bo Nix. Oh, breaking news! What do we got? I just wanted people to know that the Falcons showed up to work today. Oh, oh no, they know. At, they know. Look at that over. It's more of a he's still at yeah, work. Yeah, he's still at work. That's they, the they know news. he's usually showing Wait, up. You got coffee in that mug? Yep. Okay. okay so sweating. well, oh, you're sweating. <laughs> sweating. <laughs> we, he's like, he's like, yeah, this show's running long, guys. I'm on a timer. Let's wrap this oh, man. up. Um, wide receiver duds, tight end duds. We'll run through them real quick. Um, in the uh. The whirlpool of New York, Devontae Adams, four for fifty-four. Dude, it's that's pretty wild here. Of uh, thirty yards in the first week, fifty-four in this particular week. And do you guys know who the wide receiver five on the season is right now? Is that Garrett Wilson? Garrett Wilson. He has certainly been. Uh, even if you look at expected fantasy points since Devontae okay. Adams has showed up. He has been the primary. He's been the one, and Adams has been being worked into the two. I don't know if that's going to stay for the full season. Um, but honestly, I mean, there's been a couple of plays where Adams and, and Rodgers seem strangely out of sync. I think Rodgers is um, – like, do you think he plays football for them next year? Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I haven't thought about that one. Okay. Uh, Jalen Waddell, yeah, just four for 45. Big bummer. Uh, Amari Cooper just one for three, where Keon Coleman was great. Five Keon, for Keon Coleman was awesome. He made some amazing plays. And then Khalil Shakir is just he, – he reminds me of what Cole Beasley was doing for them a few years ago. Mm -hmm. He is just a release valve. I don't like the way that they call this offense for Dalton Kincaid. The plays that Kincaid's involved in are never high-value plays. But Shakir gets the PPR points. Coleman's been getting the contested catch points. He deserves a ton of credit because we were pretty hard on him to start the year. But um, he almost had another big one down the sideline, too. He could have caught. He's been good. Coleman was great in this game, and and the targets were early and often because the, mm. the Bills didn't run or didn't throw a lot later in the game. Um, but, you know, the first two drives was like Keon Coleman, Keon Coleman, Keon Coleman. It, he, he, was, he was the number one read couple players we hoped for more from, Cole Komet, just one target. I, I'm going to correlate the lack of Komet involvement to the lack of completion percentage for Caleb Williams. That's a bad game plan. Yeah, I mean, you could throw in DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, That's every, fair. everybody. That's fair, but um, one target, though. Gross. 
Jake Ferguson, eight targets, just six for twenty three. That's what I'm saying. Is, they're dysfunctional, At the man. Of the show of like the there were so many plays where it was he had time. Like it's Dak is moving around the pocket for what I think is a very fair adequate amount of time, and then it's just check it down to Ferguson who's in the flat. Yeah, and he gets immediately hit. Something's something's weird, man. Yeah, something's weird there and in New York. Tomorrow we've got waivers and streaming quarterback options on Wednesday. Hungry for more? The Thursday night preview. Ooh. And Thursday, Thursday's Halloween. Are we still doing that? No, nah. I think so. All right. I, think so. I mean, oh, like, we do have a, some updated country? news here. Um, Brian Thomas Jr. could miss two to four weeks with a chest, uh, chest, yeah, a chest rib injury suffered on Sunday, and Christian Kirk's out for the season. Wow. Gee whiz. So I guess man. we'll talk about that on the waiver show tomorrow. But that's a bummer for Brian Thomas. He's been playing, it is. playing some great football. So. That'll do it. We'll let the Falcon get to his business, his real business, and uh, we'll be back with you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Check out jointhefoot.com if you want to become a supporter of this community. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.